All right, guys, what's going on? Hope you're doing good. Um, back at you with another Sebastian Rogers video. Um, hope you guys had a good Easter weekend. Um, so, kind of not much going on as far as uh, breaking news or anything like that in the uh, Sebastian Rogers case, other than uh, the ex-wife of... Uh, Chris Proudfoot coming out and, um, you know, given, given her side of the story on how bad things were with Chris, um, you know, she said that, uh, when, when they were in the hospital and, uh, I guess he was getting kind of out of control and and just being mean to her and they threatened to uh, get social services involved at the hospital uh, which they can do um, you know um, I think uh, Chris's ex-wife really uh, showed us a side of Chris that we might have you know was wondering about but she basically confirmed it you know what I mean she basically confirmed it so um, and with Chris Proudfoot's ex-wife coming out and you know basically you know I mean, it's, it's pretty bad guys I mean what she said I mean that there's no excuse for it uh, I don't know if Chris Proudfoot's gonna come on here and give a rebuttal or or what i mean what do you guys if you guys were kind of leaning towards chris and katie uh not having anything to do with sebastian's disappearance uh did the interview with chris proudfoot's ex-wife uh, did it change the way you felt about him you know uh so you can answer that in the comments after the video so, uh, yeah, Chris Proudfoot's, in, in my opinion, Chris Proudfoot's ex-wife uh, shut him down. She completely shut him down. I ain't seen him on social media since she done her interview. So it'd be interesting to see if uh, um, he does any more interviews or uh, comes back into the public eye after his ex-wife basically, in my opinion, shut him down. All right. Um, another thing uh, that's kind of been floating out there is, you know, may, maybe they're hiding Sebastian. Um, and, you know, if, if someone's hiding him, um, it, it's, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to be uh, in a lot of legal trouble, put it that way. So. Are you going to spend the rest of your life in jail? No, but you're going to be uh, you're going to be up the creek without a paddle. I'll put it that way. If you're caught, and that's if someone's hiding Sebastian. So I mean, if Sebastian's not in CPS protective custody, then whoever's got him is holding him illegally. I'll just put it that way. Okay. Now. Um, thinking about this today, you know, I couldn't help but think about the Summer Wells case going on three years and, uh, police still don't have much to go on in the Summer Wells case, right? And, uh, you know, of course, in the Summer Wells case, you know, the, there's a theory out there floating around that, you know, they may have sold her. Uh, I don't think you're going to sell a 15-year-old. Uh, so, either with Sebastian, hopefully someone's got him and the worst ain't happened or more likely the worst has happened. Uh, and hopefully he didn't fall victim to basically what Gannon Stalk had to go through um, with his stepmother. So hopefully uh, Sebastian didn't have to go through anything 
like that with his step dad. And I'm not saying Chris done anything. I'm just saying I hope that Sebastian didn't have to go through that. You know, y'all know what I mean? Because ever since the ex-wife come out and um, I mean, told her side of the story. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, at this point, you know, if Katie and Chris are involved in Sebastian's disappearance, um, I don't see, you know, with with their, you know, with the bad publicity that they've got, that they've more or less created to, um, you know, with the different answers. Uh, the shady answers on, on the interviews. Um, I don't think going forward, Chris and Katie are probably going to have an easy life until Sebastian is found or Katie and Chris are, you know, publicly cleared by the police. Um, I mean, who would want to hire, like Chris said, you know, he's going back to work. Um, I, I mean, I don't know right now who would hire Katie and Chris um, because of several factors. You got you got the bad publicity, right, all over the news and everything like that. I mean, the microscope is on Chris and Katie. Uh, every time you hear, you know, like Nancy Grace. Nancy, Gra Nancy Grace could have um, went anywhere. She could have, she could have questioned, you know, um, anybody associated with Chris and Katie, but, and everybody, everybody just seems to think Chris and Katie, um, have something to do with Sebastian's disappearance. And, uh, it also seems like, you know, Chris and Katie kind of done this to themselves, giving all these interviews and, uh, shady answers. You know, the, uh, the answers that Chris gave about, you know, whipping Sebastian with the belt. Um, you know, some people's called that out. So there, there's a lot of inconsistent answers to a lot of questions in a lot of these interviews. And people's called them out. People's called them out. So, I mean, going forward, I, I think Chris and Katie are going to have it rough. Um, I mean, right now, who, you know, I, I can't see Chris's employer bringing him back because of all the drama. Um, I mean, um, why bring someone back if you've got something hanging over their head where, you know, at any time they could be gone? if they are involved in Sebastian's disappearance, you know what I mean? Uh, and, and then you've got that publicity too, where they worked for you. Um, and Katie said something about going to college and, and, you know, I just don't know right now who would stick their neck out as an employer to uh, employ these two people, knowing what they've gotten over their heads um, you know, all the bad publicity, uh, it could bring a lot of drama to the employer, a uh, lot, a lot of stuff, you know, number one, yeah, that, I mean, that's a big one right there, I mean, if, if someone was, like, if Chris was to go back to work at St. Jude's, uh, or anywhere, uh, I feel like a lot of drama is going to follow him wherever he goes, same thing with Katie, if Katie gets, you know, uh, a job somewhere, uh, the drama, you know, of the investigation, everything's going to follow her to her employment. So, um, it's just, I think going forward, and unless police can clear them, uh, publicly and, and get them in the eyes of the public, you know, to, to, you know, say we they don't have nothing to do with Sebastian's disappearance. Um, there, I, I think Katie and Chris are gonna have it rough. I really do going forward. You know, they're gonna have, they're not gonna have much of a life.
going forward. Uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, and the other thing too is it just, guys, like the Summer Wells case, poof, she's gone, right? Uh, used to, it seems like people, if they didn't want their kids uh, there for a while, they were, they were leaving them in hot cars, right? Y'all remember that? Probably about 10 years ago. Uh, you know, it was, and there's, there's some, you know, people that's been in the news. I mean, I, some guy went to, I think he went to work and left his kid in a car. Um, you know, there was one up here in Gatlinburg where some, uh, a couple left their kid in a car. Um, and, uh, it, it's not good guys. And I think it makes me wonder I'm beginning to think people who don't want their kids have figured out how to get rid of them, how to make them go missing and get away with it. Because I think if Sebastian just went missing on a spur of the moment, you know, ran off kind of thing. I, I feel like, yeah, he definitely would have been found by now. Summer Wells, too. I feel like if Summer Wells had ran off, um, she, she would have been found by now. I'm thinking people that don't want their kids, guy. I'm beginning to think people that don't want their kids, they have figured out how to make them go missing and legally get away with it. And, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's definitely some planning involved in this. Uh, just like John Pruitt said uh, here recently with a phone call, Andy B placed, I guess, I guess Andy B was talking to John Pruitt and John Pruitt is like, you know, unless we have concrete evidence. So is that what we're look, is that what we're going to be looking at here with Chris and Katie and who, who may be involved in Sebastian's disappearance? Unless there is concrete evidence, are we going to be where we're at right now, five years from now? Is this going to follow the exact same path? that the Summer Wells case has, has went down. Same state, same state agency uh, investigate, helping to investigate it. You got TBI helping Hawkins County, you got TBI helping Sumner County. Uh, is the Sebastian Rogers case gonna take the same path that the Summer Wells case did? Just because if this was planned and there's no concrete evidence to prosecute anybody. Just wonder, guys. I just wonder. So anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Um, gonna be uh, bringing you a bunch of content in April, so stay tuned for that. I'm gonna be going back out to Hawkins County and doing some searches. I got some searches planned uh, for April up in there. A uh, whole bunch of stuff for you guys. whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to be uh, searching for, you know, Holly and, Holly and Snap. Uh, you know, there, there are some areas in Kingsport that I want to search uh, where, where if you're local to the Kingsport area, you, you know these places are very, very sketchy. And... Uh, uh, not, a lot, not a lot of people um, go to these places, put it that way. And it would be easy to, uh, these places would be easy to dump a body, evidence, anything like that. So uh, stay tuned for those videos. Uh, we're going to go out exploring, see if we can't come up with anything, discover anything. Uh, if we do, we'll get the police involved, see what happens. Um, so I got, I just got a bunch of stuff for April coming your way. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but anyway, guys, drop your comments. Let me know what you think about what I said. And I'll see you on the next video.